Sammy B and the B is for we'll be right back to our regular scheduled programming. But for this week, we're going to preview the trade deadline. I'll analyze two of the most interesting teams at this deadline, the Bengals and the Cardinals and some other trade candidates and some guys that got traded already as we move towards a time that could alter how we think about these teams moving forward. A nice little midseason switch up. I'm Sam Brookhouse, and this is Stumer Daily. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sumer Daily. Today, we're not actually going to cover any fantasy because we're going to look at the real trade market. The trade deadline is coming up next weekend, and us at Sumer Sports are bringing you all the great information you need to know going into that date. Today, we did a really fantastic show on the Sumer Sports Show with Thomas Dimitrov and Lindsey Rhodes. I encourage you to go check that out. I showed up, Sean Syed of the Stats and Scheme podcast showed up, and we really did a two-hour breakdown kind of of everything as it stands now. So I'm going to take some of that information and summarize it down for you here and also add a little bit of more analytical color there as well. So what to expect from the trade deadline? I went back and looked at kind of October, early November trades, so around that trade deadline since 2020, And typically, you can expect mm, about 12, 13, at the most, 18 trades during that time period. Thus far in October, we've had eight trades already. So this could be a more active one as we move into kind of crunch time next week. Typically, the positions that get traded are, you know, wide receivers, running backs, cornerbacks, tight ends, uh, sometimes edge rushers, very rarely tackles, even though we did see a tackle trade today, Cam Robinson going to the Vikings. So expect some more skill player type guys to be moving around here in the next couple of weeks. And so the Bengals are certainly the most fascinating team for me for this trade deadline. Why? Let's just look at the generalities of the Bengals. We already know that typically they are a little bit more cash conservative and also they're a little bit more conservative in how they deal with people who are about to become free agents. They also like to build through the draft, and they've never really played ball at the deadline too much, but they're in such an interesting situation because they currently have T. Higgins on the franchise tag, and they really need to re-up Jamar Chase. And it seems like that extension of Jamar Chase, which they declined to do this year and will, I assume will be doing next year, will likely be one of the biggest contracts in non-quarterback history for the NFL. So so they currently sit at ninth in the AFC in terms of net points. They're right around minus eight. They would be 10th in the NFC. They sit at three and five. Teams with comparable point differentials, however, go all the way up to five and three. The Falcons are minus eight, so just a touchdown difference there. The Seahawks are minus five. They're four and four, so a game up. Another team, the Colts, are plus three. They're also four and four. So this team is probably slightly better than its record. And you deep dive into the team itself, and their offense is certainly better than their record. They're fourth in pass EPA. Joe Burrow is having like an MVP type year, especially if they start stringing wins together. They're a little bit below average in rush EPA, but all around, this is a pretty solid offense. But where they are really, really struggling is on the defensive side of the ball. They're 27th in defensive EPA, 30th in success rate. Their run game on the defensive side of the ball is just not good. Right now, they're 31st in EPA and dead last in success rate in terms of stopping the run. Teams who were in this spot last year, Arizona, Carolina, Dallas, you know, kind of a mix of teams, Miami, Kansas City, San Francisco, both of the Super Bowl competitors. So there is a way back, but... Where can we get away from those Dallas and Kansas City, San Francisco, the teams that were really good last year, is that they were all pretty decent in stopping the pass, which the Bengals are not. Like, you look at people who are just last year in the bottom overall EPA, the best that you can get is 9-8 and eight Green Bay, who snuck into the playoffs and ended up winning a game. I think that's kind of going to have to be the path for the Bengals this year as they get hot on offense and they take that kind of Green Bay path from last year. But I don't really know what they'll 
will do to improve this defense here? You know, the defensive line hasn't actually been terrible. Sam Hubbard has been very good against the run. BJ Hill has been kind of a certified starter. They've had other people be around average or above average, but they're really struggling at the second and third level. Right now, Hilton and Logan Wilson are the only two guys who are really plus players. Cam Taylor Britt has been really bad in some of our coverage metrics. The safeties have been good in coverage, but really poor in run defense. And it's really hard to get some of these corners and, and safeties at the deadline. The only major, major ones that I could find was Stephon Gilmore to the Panthers from the Pats and the big time Ramsey trade, which I don't really think is in the cards for the Bengals. Also, a safety trade for Bayard uh, last year from the Eagles, from the Titans to the Eagles for a fifth, sixth, and another safety there. So I think it's going to be a little hard for them to pick up a safety. And they typically don't like trading draft picks. So like in the past five years, they've only not made a pick in any given round uh, in 2019 in the fifth round and 2022 in the fifth round. So I think that they might have to be sellers here. And I don't necessarily think that will harm them going forward. And the person that I think I really have circled is Trey Hendrickson. Trey Hendrickson right now is sixth in some of our advanced pass rush metrics. He's really elite, but he's really their only elite pass rusher. And so he's bottom of the league and run stuffing. Like he's not really helping there. And it's just a question of like, can you let this guy go? And your defense is still probably going to be not great. I mean, you can't really get much worse at this point, especially in terms of the run game. He's never really in that. He's never really been an athletic guy and his play speed and some of his more athletic tracking metrics are starting to fall off of a cliff. Maybe you get out in front of it a year ahead. You trade him away. You get some draft capital or maybe a player for player trade. That being said, he's ultra productive and it's going to take a lot for another team to come in. And three of the last four years, he's had 13 and a half sacks and the quote down year for him was an eight sack year. And he had a similar amount of QB hits. So maybe just some variance there. And he's already well on pace for that. He already has seven sacks this year. I think the Ravens could be a good fit. I think the Eagles could be a good fit. I really would love to see him in a Falcons uniform. They already traded for Matt Judon. Their GM, Terry Fontenot, is from the Saints organization. He was there when Hendrickson was with the Saints and had a breakout year. Raheem Morris was in the NFC South as well when he was a Saint. I think it just is a really good fit. And I think it makes sense for, you know, a team like the Falcons who have already bought in, invest a lot and are sitting at five and three to go, you know, towards the, we want to win now. We want to win this year with Kirk Cousins. as our quarterback. And I think it makes sense for the Bengals who are probably going to re up on their young player, Jamar chase. They have Joe Burrow under contract. Their offense is doing well to kind of move off of an aging player that may not help them down the line, especially when they do have, some cap questions coming up. So another team that is in this similar standpoint is the Arizona Cardinals. They also sit at four and four. So a game over what the Bengals are at, but they're substantially worse in net points. They sit at minus 27. They're more in the range of like the jets, the saints, the Rams are also in this, but the Rams have been missing most of their offensive players all year. The Browns who have been getting killed all year, but now look okay with Jameis. Uh, and the Cowboys, who who also have not been performing very well. I think they are significantly overperforming what they've actually done. They have the 29th rated defense in the league. But on offense, they're doing a little bit better. Not quite as well as the Bengals are. They're more kind of at the line of the top third. Uh, but they also just have very few elite players on defense right now. And it, it's even more pronounced than the Bengals. Sands. Buddha Baker. And I think Buddha Baker could be one of the biggest targets this year in this trade market because there are a lot of teams. I mentioned the Cowboys. Uh, I, I, I mentioned a team like the Vikings as well, who's really been playing well on defense, but are starting to see some slides, some regression, particularly as they played the Lions and the Rams the last two weeks. What, who need to add kind of a do it all player to their back end. And so Buddha's been 
ultra effective in run defense. In fact, I heard a story today that people mark some of his missed tackles in like a different column because he can just get to the ball so well and get to the point where he has a chance to tackle someone <laughs> and no one else would be able to. He's been reasonable in coverage. Uh, and he's first in tackles amongst safeties. He's in the last year of his contract. He does have a pretty pricey P5 salary, but it would be interesting to see him move. You know, some of the teams that I think could really utilize him, and I'll go a little bit deeper here, is like Dallas. They've just been atrocious all around on defense. Adding a multi-time Pro Bowler, even just as a rental, could help kind of get them back into the groove, especially as, you know, that they're going to have to start competing if they want to make the playoffs. The Eagles look really good. The Commanders look really good. They're going to have to play some good defense against those two offenses, which look very good right now. And then I think the Vikings is just like the absolute dream fit right now, specifically because they've kind of managed to keep a clean cap sheet and really be able to make a move. You know, they have Harrison Smith right now at the safety position. He's growing older in age. It'd be good to add Buddha here for a year they have two fists the browns and their own i think that's kind of in the range of what it would take to get a safety a kind of a devalued position at this rate although he is a multi-time all pro multi-time pro bowler it probably would need to come with a contract next year as well for the minnesota vikings to go get him but i'm really interested because i think a lot of teams could really utilize buda baker and frankly the defense is already so bad for the Cardinals, I think it may make sense to go and try to get some draft capital and refresh some of those positions instead of you know just holding on to Buddha and and maybe losing him for nothing moving forward. So down to some like less starry players. I'm really looking at Devon Godshow, the, you know, the guy from LSU now playing for the Patriots. Bill Belichick has highlighted him as one of kind of the center items of when he was the coach at the Patriots and some of those great run defenses. The Patriots are one of two kind of abjectly tanking teams. You look at the Panthers and then you look at the Patriots. Those are two teams who are making moves clearly to try to refresh their draft capital and also to kind of lose some games right now. Uh, not saying they're trying to lose, but certainly making moves that make it really difficult. And Belichick pointed it out the other day. This was actually a really good run defense last year and they have kind of most of the crew back and it just has not been great this year they've already moved off of josh Uche, who they sent to the chiefs i think god show is probably next you know he's not the best this year he is getting a little older but some run metrics show that he will have some hope he's been you know certified top of the level starter in his finishing get off metrics in the run game and that's really his bread and butter and i think the 49ers could really use him there. They're missing Javon Hargrave. Givens also has a groin injury. Collins has been about average. Elliott been okay. I think they can really add a stout run defender for first and second downs as they kind of try to compete in that rodeo NFC West out there where all the teams are around 500. I think it's a great fit. I think they can probably buy at a low price, maybe a sixth, maybe a seventh. And I think it makes a lot of sense for them uh, to go grab a good player, given that they probably want to make a stretch run, particularly as Christian McCaffrey is rumored to be coming back here shortly. And the Patriots probably want to move off some of their older players in more of a basketball style trade. And so finally, I had Deontay Johnson on my list as a guy who I thought would be a great tra trade candidate for a lot of teams. And sure enough, the Ravens go and trade for him today and so i just want to cover that trade because it's very good i've been on the deontay johnson hype train for a while and yes the panthers traded for him this year but i i really think it's some good process you know they traded dante jackson for deontay now they trade him for a fifth i think they've kind of improved their draft position based on that kind of series of events the formula for Deontay Johnson has always been his ability to get open on routes. And you look across sources, including Sumer Sports, including people like ESPN, and he is just able to be open. And the caveat here is that that's always been with pretty poor quarterback play. When he was in a Steelers uniform, he had Kenny Pickett and various other dudes, Mason Rudolph for a period of time. And he was still able to get open. They just weren't able to deliver the passes. Then he goes to the Panthers. 
And still, like his metrics are still elite in getting open. They just haven't been able to get the ball to him. And when they have, he's had really, really productive games. Now he goes to the juggernaut of the offense of the Ravens. They now have Rashad Bateman. They have Likely. They have Mark Andrews. They have Zay Flowers. And now they have Deontay Johnson to kind of put in the slot as well. This is a embarrassment of riches for Lamar to play with in the past game. And that's not even including Derrick Henry in the offensive line who's come around pretty big. Some people that I did highlight that I thought he'd be good with were, was like the Chargers. But now he goes to a team that is absolutely studly and a quarterback who can probably get him the ball for the first time in a very, very long time in his career. And so it's really going to be interesting how that comes together. And overall, I wouldn't be shocked if some more wide receivers get moved this trade deadline. I think edge rusher and wide receiver, especially that because that is the trades that the Chiefs, the best team in the league right now, made. I think there's going to be a run on some of those guys or at least some intense negotiations that may or may fall, may or may not fall through. But it'll be really interesting to see how that goes. So signing off from Sumer Sports, I'm Sam Brookhouse. Thank you for listening.